All right, everyone, welcome to lecture 3-1 on the infratemporal fossa and the pterygopalatine fossa. So these are the deeper regions of the face and the skull. The infratemporal fossa is mainly related to uh, mastication. It has, contains the TMJ and the muscles of mastication. So here in these few slides, we can see these muscles of mastication and their attachment points. Uh, make note that the medial pterygoid muscle has a very similar directionality to the uh, masseter muscle, whereas the lateral pterygoid is attaching to the condyle of the, uh, of, of the uh, mandible. So uh, just note those quick differences there. Uh, something interesting about the uh, temporomandibular joint, or TMJ, is that it is a synovial joint that which contains an articular disc within it. Uh, and in the process of opening the jaw, the lateral pterygoid muscle is actually pulling the jaw forward, uh, basically, uh, in a way, disarticulating uh, the condyle of the mandible. Uh, in this process, the condyle of the mandible encounters this articular tubercle of the zygomatic bone, and as such, uh, causes this hinging action. The, the mandible actually has to hinge down uh, during this process, and that's what causes the jaw to open. So lateral pterygoid is pulling the uh, jaw forward, and in that process, opening the mouth, lowering uh, the jaw. So it's actually a, a motion of protrusion. <clears throat> so now let's take a look at the maxillary arteries uh, that enter this region, this deep infratemporal fossa in the face. So the maxillary artery has uh, three different uh, regions to it. It has a proximal region near the uh, external carotid artery we see here. So branching off that proximal region, we have some uh, arteries uh, that are quite important. One of them, the inferior alveolar artery, travels with the inferior alveolar nerve to supply the teeth. We also have middle meningeal artery, which enters the cranium and supplies the dura of the brain along the middle cranial fossa. Uh, so that's why it's named the middle meningeal uh, artery. We'll see that this artery uh, actually enters the cranium through a tiny uh, foramen named foramen spinosum. <clears throat> and this has uh, some implications uh, associated with uh, headache and intracranial pressure and things like that we'll get to. Then uh, this middle section is basically the muscular branch. So most of the muscular portions of maxillary artery come off of this middle portion. You can see um, uh, arteries supplying temporalis. There are two portions of it there, to masseter, to the pterygoids, and to the uh, buccal region of the face, the cheek. Uh, we also have the uh, posterior. So moving past that, we have the distal portion, which contains deeper arteries. Uh, the posterior superior alveolar artery supplying the teeth, and um, uh, eventually the distal portion uh, becomes the sphenopalatine artery, which enters the deeper regions of the face. So here is a uh, more anatomically uh, shaded and accurate drawing of these, and it's got some additional labels here, uh, but at any rate, take a look at these. They're important. This is what the dissection is going to look like when we remove the ramus of the mandible. Uh, we're going to see the pterygoids. We are going to have to pull those pterygoids away in order to identify the branches of maxillary artery and the branches of V3, the mandibular division of trigeminal nerve. So when we see that, um, so first we're going to see a lot of these muscular branches of the artery and the nerve, and they're just named after the muscle they supply. Uh, so they're not uh, critical to understand, they're pretty apparent and obvious. But we also have uh, branches like the inferior alveolar artery and uh, nerve traveling uh, with it there. The lingual nerve of V3 uh, will have some important components associated with it other than just the uh, sensory components and we'll talk about those in a minute. So once we remove the lateral pterygoid, we'll be able to see foramen rotundum, or sorry, foramen ovale, uh, through which V3 is traveling. 
and and at that point we'll see the branching pattern of all of this now if you can zoom in to this little portion right here by foramenal valley we'll see the middle meningeal artery and where it is entering the cranium through foramen spinosum an important consideration here is that the auriculotemporal nerve uh, a sensory nerve that heads to the side of the head you can see auriculotemporal nerve here that auriculotemporal sensory nerve uh, actually branches around uh, middle meningeal artery. So this is middle meningeal artery, and uh, these fingers here are the uh, anterior and posterior divisions of auriculotemporal nerve. As soon as they come out of uh, foramen ovale, they branch around middle meningeal nerve and then rejoin and continue out to the exterior. So if there's intracranial pressure, that causes distension of the middle meningeal artery, which results in impingement of the auriculotemporal nerve. Auriculotemporal nerve runs along the uh, temporal portion anterior to the ear, along with the uh, superficial temporal artery. And because uh, that impingement on auriculotemporal nerve is happening in a pulsatile manner, that creates that pulsatile pain sensation associated with headaches and associated with intracranial pressure. So uh, headaches, especially uh, acute headaches, should not be taken lightly. They can be a sign of intracranial pressure and should be uh, you know, evaluated through neurological exam to rule out any intracranial uh, issues. Um, okay, we'll move on. <clears throat> so here is an internal view of the infratemporal fossa. So we've bisected the skull and we're looking at it from the inside. We can see the infratemporal fossa here. We see the uh, foramen ovale with V3 traveling through it. We see the inside of the ramus of the mandible. And here you can see that inferior alveolar nerve entering uh, the mandible. We can see lingual nerve traveling along the uh, edge of the mandible just below the teeth. And an important nerve here is the uh, nerve to mylohyoid. So remember, mylohyoid is innervated by V3, and here we see that is obviously apparent. Mylohyoid nerve will branch from the inferior alveolar nerve uh, just before inferior alveolar uh, enters the mandible. Also of note on this slide are some important features we'll get back to, but I want to prime you now. Uh, here is the otic ganglion. The otic ganglion proximal to uh, the V3 division. Otic ganglion, if you remember, innervates the, uh, the, the uh, parotid gland on the side of the face. So these are the postganglionic fibers that are going to travel around with auriculotemporal nerve to go outside around behind the mandible and then innervate parotid gland. Also, we have cut through the inner ear in this section, and we can see facial nerve inside the uh, vertical portion of facial canal. Here's stylomastoid foramen. An important nerve to note is corda tympani. A corda tympani exiting through the petrotympanic fissure uh, and then uh, uh, synapsing here on, uh, while well, supplying the uh, corda tympani nerve here, uh, in fact, where it merges with lingual nerve. And so corda tympani is going to do a number of things. Uh, corda tympani is going to supply, innervate the submandibular ganglion, which isn't shown, uh, and it's going to uh, be the path for taste fibers, those SVA fibers from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. Uh, so we'll talk about that in more detail, but just priming you for that. Uh, so here again, we see those uh, portions of V uh, of the trigeminal nerve, uh, V3, V2, uh, and V1, all ghosted into this image. Here we're showing the depth of that infratemporal fossa. Uh, so. Just a, a quick review of all of these uh, branches of the trigeminal nerves. Take a look at those uh, and understand what they're supplying. Uh, so it's interesting to note that 
Um, well, we'll get, we'll get to that. So uh, here uh, we can see now the pterygopalatine fossa. Pterygopalatine fossa is deep to the uh, infratemporal fossa. So this is the pterygopalatine fossa, this small region right here through which the uh, maxillary nerve travels uh, and in which the pterygopalatine ganglion is located. So this region of the head is most easily accessed from a midline view, so a mid-sagittal cut opening uh, uh, up, and then just above the hard palate, where the interface of the soft and hard palate is, we'll be able to chip away some of the nasal concha uh, and the uh, sphenoid bone here to take a look at the pterygopalatine ganglion. Pterygopalatine ganglion has components of V2 in it, which travel down uh, into the region of the palate. Uh, so these nerves are called the, um, the uh, greater and lesser palatine uh, nerves that supply the palate. Branching off of there, we'll also have uh, some sensory branches that go to the nose. Uh, we'll have uh, posterior nasal branches, and we'll also have a nasopalatine branch that heads uh, along the septum. <clears throat> so here are those greater and lesser palatine uh, nerves descending from the uh, pterygopalatine ganglion. Now these are, uh, these are um, the GSA components providing general sensory, uh, general somatic afferent components to the palate. So these are traveling through the pterygopalatine ganglion. They are not synapsing there. The pterygopalatine ganglion uh, is going to be the, uh, the GVE components, the parasympathetics, to the nasal mucosa uh, and, and, and the um, salivary glands we'll talk about in a future lecture. So here we can see where the greater and the lesser palatine nerves, lesser is going to supply a lot of the, or some of the soft palate, a lot of the soft palate, and the greater is going to supply the hard palate. <clears throat> so here, I just mentioned this. So again, these are the sensory GSA uh, axons. These are part of the peripheral process that travel through pterygopalatine ganglion, but their cell body is located in the trigeminal ganglion, as you'd expect. These fibers are only traveling through in order to get to the palate. So uh, make note of that, don't get confused. So these palatine nerves are the nerves that are anesthetized by your dentist when your dentist is doing a root canal or whatever fun process they have planned for you that day. Uh, so in order to do this, uh, they uh, take a needle and, and uh, pierce the soft palate uh, through into the, um, the uh, pterygopalatine fossa, where both of these nerves are isolated. Uh, so here is an example of that process. This is a, um, a mid-sagittal bisection of the skull where you can see the pterygopalatine ganglion uh, has been uh, revealed by chipping away at the, uh, the lateral wall of the uh, nasal cavity. So that's all I have for you uh, for this lecture. Hope you enjoyed.